to focus on the underlying aim of that regulation as the Council of Europe understands it, to help these actors to fulfill their role in guaranteeing and promoting freedom of expression and information. So this is the, the main goal of the regulation and, and it should not be an over-regulation. <clears throat> so um, what we are doing at the moment is, is we are looking at cases like a blog or like a search engine or a social network or media. It's, it's funny that some people call the social networks or media networks or media. So for, for some of them a social network is a medium, for others it's just a network. So this is a, it's an interesting uh, thing I, I, I realized yesterday uh, again. And what we are trying to do is trying to see to what extent these new actors that are active in the media system, to what extent they take on functions that are relevant for the media system. And there are some new actors who are, it's easy, uh, it's, it's not easy anymore to distinguish them from a traditional mass media because they fulfill the whole range of functions. Um, and others maybe are just aggregating information or making them available or giving access like a search engine which performs one particular function of, of the media system. So <clears throat> instead of calling all the media actors in the media uh, field media, maybe we need to, to, to um, go from leave the organizational approach and go to a functional approach, a graduated approach where, where we look at what services, what activities uh, uh, correspond to what functions and therefore the regulation should also be graduated. So it might not be easy to say you are a medium or you're not a medium or you're just an intermediary who just at the, at the other end of the scale provides physical access to the internet. There are many actors in between, many functions in between where we might have to see to what extent they they fulfill some criteria that uh, means that they are part of the media system and for these functions, for, the, for these aspects where they are relevant for, for being part of the media system and relevant for contributing to, to uh, the exercise of people for freedom of expression and information, that the regulation should be adequate to that function not over-regulation, not under-regulation. And this is a positive and negative regulation. And we want to put the stress on the positive regulation, meaning enabling these actors from, from, from the access provider to, to the social uh, network operator, what is their contribution that they can make to, to uh, allowing their customers or people to exercise their freedom of expression? How should they therefore be protected protected from other interests that might abuse their function in, in preventing them from contributing to, to, to freedom of expression and access to information. But also, and that goes along with this, what are the responsibilities that they undergo through performing one or several functions that are relevant for the media system. This is what we are, uh, the, the idea that we are trying to develop in order to have at least for, for Europe, a commonly shared notion of, of the media system as it is now with these new actors that are changing and the technical development that is changing based on the functions. And uh, <clears throat> there are several ways then if you identify these functions to react. Maybe for some functions you need an ex ante regulation which is maybe more prescriptive. For other functions you let people act and then if something bad happens you have an ex post regulation you, maybe you have binding regulations for clearly illegal things like, like uh, uh, child pornography. Maybe you have soft law uh, uh, provisions for things that are more dependent on cultural uh, diversities between the societies where you just give guidance and, and say you should treat things in such a way but there might be reasons to treat it differently. So there's a whole range of graduated regulation from, from very strict legal provisions to just recommendations on how you should behave. One thing that is very important is, is, is transparency and consumer, uh, uh, not only protection, but consumer empowerment. That, for instance, if you are social media, that you raise the discussion of if something appears on a social network, which is which might be considered illegal, who is, is liable? Is it the operator? Is it you who put it online? Is it the one who created the content? Is it the one who found the content on a blog and then put it on a social network? These questions have to be transparently discussed 
And there, of course, the, the network operator, the social network operator has a responsibility. That does not mean that he is responsible for the content that is on his network. But these questions have to be made transparent and the user should be aware of the part of the responsibility or liability that they share. Because if everybody just says, um, no, it's not.